All right, um, in this video I will be giving an overview of this proof of concept tool. It is a terrain scattering automation suite. Uh, has various tools to help with the tedious process of mapping assets to height field masks for scattering, especially using variations and also with some nice um, nat more natural transitions between masks scattering. Um, okay, so what are we looking at? We are looking at 30 plus assets and uh, between these different scattering masks for rock, trees, grass, flowers. And the, the goal of this tool was to make everything in once it's scattered or before it's scattered everything editable swappable and reconstructable um, quickly and easily through um, well-defined processes okay first we have the rock and tree masks they aren't doing much there's just one asset to each of those with uh, just some some uh, out of the box houdini variation and the scattering the primary and secondary grasses also not too much going on though they're they're uh, in the primary grass there's variations of the grass and also variations of a weed uh, but this is more readily apparent to have uh, multiple assets in one map to one uh, mask in the flowers I have some purple flowers and some white flowers here they share the same mask space and scattering on the flower mask but they are separately editable as far as weighting the distribution and uh, editing individual variations. All right, so for example, in this uh, second render, the weight of the purple flowers have been set seven to one with the white flowers. So a lot more purple flowers. And then one of the variations uh, was transformed in the y-axis uh, to be a lot taller. So we can see just easily, just changing a couple things, able to make uh, this difference, but still sharing that same uh, scatter group space with the two different sets of scattering variations. So each the white flower and the purple flower each have half a dozen or more variations. Um, the other cool thing here is if you notice the primary grass and the secondary grass, this transition between them is not what is available in available in Houdini out of the box. Um, unless there is a setting I was not able to find. But out of the box, we get more of a direct transition uh, without any variation of size and um, no no ability to affect the amount of scatter. Um, at least not that I could tell how to do that. I have not been able to find any resources that tell me how to do this. So I did add some um, some vex wrangling in there. So the scale fall off and the pluck, there's a pluck fall off to the masks. So you can see, especially over here on the left, as the primary grass gets closer to the mask boundaries, it gets a little smaller and then also plucks some of them out. And the, the light green grass is already a little shorter. It's also already set to be a little shorter to have variation. And now it uh, really gets lowered towards the low mask values. And we get a much more natural look compared to a more uniform look. And uh, the way it's set up with the tool I have, you can act, it's actually a slider for both the plucking and the scale. So you can go from this to this and anything in between. Uh, and that is based on mask value. So that is what you can use to um, control the transition between the masks. All right, so the last part of this tool I want to show is the hierarchical masking. The masking is based off of the what is uh, being scattered in the scatter set. So, for example, this rock has the top priority. 
then the tree, then the grass, then the flowers. Um, the rock uh, here is going to be our primary example. Uh, we actually aren't applying any extra masking uh, on the flowers from the grass as they can share the same space. Okay, so we can see in in this uh, this render where we have um, I demonstrated the natural distribution. We also have I, I uh, bypassed the the mask the masking system I have in place for the Houdini terrain, and we can see that the grass and flowers go right through this. So uh, this tool out of the box will automatically create a mask and then you can fine-tune the values so that um, it uses a projection either from above or below the terrain and make sure and everything that everything stays a little bit away from populating the um, scatter points too close to that uh, too close to that object so we could even see in this first screenshot that there was an extra tree that was intersecting with a rock and um, that was also deleted. All right, in this part of the demo, I'm going to show you everything that the tools, the scatter tools are doing uh, with the nodes and this for this proof of concept tool. Um, just keep in mind that these were all developed as toolbar tools and the plan was after working on this for a while uh, to, to learn HDAs um, and I'm going to move I'm going to be moving all these uh, functionalities into HDAs which will be a much more powerful way to run these tools uh, for height height field scattering <clears throat> Okay, the assumption is we have a height field already and we already have uh, the scatter masks set up. So, uh, oh, and we also have uh, brought in all of our assets. Uh, a lot of these are coming from the um, uh, Quixel bridge, just imported there, uh, real easy for Redshift that has them all, the materials all set up, ready to render. Um, okay, so. <clears throat> the masks I have are a uh, rock, tree, primary and secondary grass, and a flower mask. Um, I'm not going to map them all right now, but I'm going to show you that process. So let's just take the lemongrass, for instance. Lemongrass has um, five, five variants, and one of the tools I wrote was to create a scatter set now and I'll explain all these as I go uh, the term scatter set scatter group and all that um, so let's first create the scatter set uh, it'll confirm the nodes that it found based on a substring this one uh, was I think VAR okay it created a scatter set <coughs> and go in here this uh, has some things that will be used later also uh, for the viewport uh, proxy colors and everything um, individual transforms for the individual uh, variants okay so uh, I would rename this and how I would rename it is I would uh, name it one of the one of the user masks underscore scatter underscore set and if I I could also add multiple scatter sets to a single mask. So I would consider a scatter group by just using um, the mask name, a number, scatter set. Okay, so assume we've done all that. All of these uh, names match to a user defined uh, height field mask that exists in our height field. And here is our height field with the masks. Uh, I'm not going to go into those, but we have um, a null node to distinguish uh, where the scattering is going to happen. Okay, uh, that's this is it for 
preparing to run the scatter tool, go ahead and select them all, all the ones we want. Uh, hit the hyphen scatter tool. Um, which ones do we want to be used to be using uh, source point scattering, tree mask, flower mask. Also, we have a scatter bridge and lots of new nodes in our high field for the scattering. So basically what each of these layers of the scatter set is doing is it's hierarchically scattering to the masks. So as mentioned before in the video, the rock has um, a mask that it creates so that the next scatter set and uh, all subsequent scatter sets will avoid populating points within that mask. Um, same with the tree. So the tree will take the mask from before, add to it once the um, points are generated. Uh, and then also, as I mentioned before, we wouldn't do that for grass, for the primary and secondary grass, because we don't want the flowers uh, to be maxed out at all. They can share the same space. Okay, and a cool part of this tool is when these layers are when these layers are um, loaded up, it takes a lot to finely tune these uh, to, to how you want them. And so what I've done is if you, there's a naming convention, if you just save a preset for this node type with the mask name, rock, that will auto load next time you have a mask, a mask name, rock that uh, is loading with this tool. That can be turned off in the tool as well, uh, in case you don't want it. All right, and then, uh, and also interesting, let's look at, let's go ahead and look at the flowers. So the, here's the scattering strategy uh, using source points. Um, here's, here's an import, we're bringing the objects in from the bridge, and I'll, br I'll show you the scatter bridge in a second. But basically, all the objects come in through that um, that output from the bridge. So let's go look at that. All right, so here I have uh, I had to find two scatter sets for the flowers. So there's the variations of the white flower and the variations of the purple flower. Um, we can, the, here we can assign the weights for them. Okay. Um, you probably noticed that here we see all these, all these assets we have actually have proxies. Um, this is because when you have these kinds of scenes with this many instances, you are quickly going to just see um, boxes and not not the full geometry and let's go and let's see what that looks like all right <clears throat> so you can see we yeah sure we can see a little bit of grass but it has so many instances that it'll, it'll bog down uh, the scene slow down the computer and be real buggy so this is why this um, mask, or the, yeah, this um, this kind of render controller, we are able to go ahead and render that out when we go to render, but we can use the uh, just these proxies before that, and it's just a lot easier to navigate the viewport when you are using the proxies. And also for any of these proxies, uh, for example, these these trees are just you know one box. If we want something. That, rep that was more representative of the tree, we could actually get a very low poly version of that tree and uh, stick in the proxy into this controller. Uh, so, and that would be easy for say the tree because it only has the one asset coming in. So this is a really handy way to um, keep the viewport 
clean and smooth and still have still represent the scattering that's going on. Another cool thing with these render controllers is on any one of these we can control the redshift parameters. So if we wanted to enable the displacement and tessellation for the textures, then we could do that here, which is really nice because we can do that per group, per scatter set, um, because uh, that can be qu quite taxing on Redshift to be generating all the tessellation for all the scatter groups. So uh, the height fields, the, only, the thing the height field still keeps is the um, is the texture just for the height field. So the height field's still being rendered, but we have the render flag set just after converting the height field, giving it a normal, and then we just gave it like mud cracks. The uh, Parm Control Center. Okay, so this again, this would be so much better in an HDA. Uh, this is not not a good way to do this. Up, back. Uh, so just the 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 um, any of the scatter sets that are created from these, their um, their lods are here. So here we can control which lod is loaded per asset. And that goes for all of the variations within that asset. Um, and what that looks like, let's go ahead and look at lemongrass again. And click in here. And it'll control this LOD switch right here. We can see that it's referenced. All right, for this last part of this demo, I'm going to show the uh, mask fall off with the plucking and the scaling. So here we uh, have a top view of our secondary grass. Here's the mask underneath. Um, so we can see that it fades from uh, mostly a value of one then to zero. And so what we are going for is along where it's, wherever it's not a uh, full value, it's gonna be more and more affected by the fall off. Okay, so let's go into the height field, secondary grass mask scatter. Okay, and so uh, first I'll do the pluck. Okay, we can see that uh, quite a few, it's a lot more natural along the edges and still full in the middle. And now we'll do the scaling. Okay, so you get a lot smaller scatter instances where the mask value starts to fade at the edges. Gives it a very natural look. Okay, so the way this is set up, uh, which is not a, a way I would want to do it um, the tool modified the the um, height field scatter nodes and added uh, vex added some vex wrangling in it, which actually points or references from um, a node within the height field scatter. So um, just after doing some digging, I was able to figure out that I can go inside the node. And before this for each, um, I was able to put in this attribute wrangler <coughs> and this references that those outer values. Okay, that's uh, that's it. That's how I was able to get the natural look. If, if anybody knows of a built-in Houdini, Houdini way to do this, I would very much want to know uh, what that way is to do it within Houdini.